title of it, Train Band for Glory, kind of uh, dates back to something that kind of, a book I was given as a kid. Uh, I was given two books by someone, one of them being uh, Band for Glory by Woody Guthrie and the other being Kerouac's On the Road. And uh, yeah, it started kind of like my idealism of America, really, I guess. But the album in itself is, uh, is uh, you know, it was recorded in Nashville and recorded in America. It's my first record that's recorded there, so kind of it, it sums up a lot of things that happened there for me, you know, between New York and New Orleans and Nashville and and uh, and my journey back and forth to, to England, you know, to London, to Chatham, to all those places and the kind of gaps between them, really. As far as production-wise, I think, uh, it was a conscious pro progression for me because I wanted to kind of explore, you know, different different areas, and vocals and backing vocals, and using strings for the first time on a track, and uh, using a gospel quartet. And you know, Nashville as a word is one of you know it's it's a place, but it's a word in the music industry now. It's like you know you mention these places like Nashville and Memphis and. London and Liverpool and New York and it almost depicts a certain type of music and Nashville obviously with country music is such a such a big deal in the world but uh, I grew up with I grew up listening to, to country and blues and rock and roll and all that kind of thing but it was more of that kind of what they'd call the some call the golden period of country music I don't know if that's the right term but it was mainly those records that Chet Atkins and Owen Bradley recorded and and records before them like Hank Williams and uh, and other people, you know, Jimmy Rogers and the Carter family and people like that. My love speaks in words yeah, his unspoken. studio was the first place that I I, uh, I went to, I think, from the airport and uh, and met him and Chris Scruggs and uh, Justin Collins and Fred and all the other guys that were uh, they were involved in that EP at the time, so uh, it, he lived in West Nashville and it's kind of his studios around the back of his house like a barn and you know so many studios in Nashville, it's unbelievable. Obviously there's like RCA Victor, RCA B and there's kind of you know Owen Bradley's place and all of these places that kind of you know all these great records were made in like the Everly Brothers and Roy Orbison and Elvis and all these you know Patsy Cline and all these can get pretty daunting, you know, when you walk in these places. But then you just got to realise that you're there to do your thing, and uh, and it, we 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 hit it off straight away. I like the kind of artist producer relationship and stuff. I'm not kind of like one of those people who wants to stand in a studio pushing buttons. You know, I want to kind of just sing and play them right. So uh, the, the, the kind of the working relationship with Adam was brilliant because it was just kind of like a co-production almost. You know, although he's a he's a studio boss, for want of a better word, I don't really know much about it. But uh, I kind of told him exactly what I wanted, and you know, we talked about it, talked about different ideas and stuff and everything, and uh, and uh, we just tried different things. It was great. You know, it's definitely a kind of creative uh, meeting of, of, uh, of a group of people though really, you know, not just Adam, there was Justin Collins and, and Kerry Kotsianis, Adam's wife, and we just kind of like, between us, pretty much worked on vocal arrangements and, you know, I had the songs already there, so it's kind of, it was a, uh, yeah, it was a really, uh, really creative time where I kind of felt like I was you know, moving on really from one step and kind of like moving forward, which I feel like I have to. You know, the first record, it was pretty much kind of Woody Guthrie and Jimmy Rogers and Cisco Houston and early Dylan stuff and all that kind of thing. And then with the second one, it was kind of you know, thinking about, I don't know, Chet and Owen records, you know, like Patsy Cline and Loretta Lynn records and 
uh, and I don't know. I guess with this one, it was kind of it was always sort all sorts of references. You know, it was like I want to try something gospel. You know, I want to do this on a record, or I want to kind of you know with the string quartet. It was more kind of like I I I I kind of like said it would be more like going to Broadway, New York kind of strings in a way. References are always good language for me to use. It's not like you're kind of, it's not like you're copying something. It's just like you're cultivating the authentic in a way and kind of trying to do something as real as it might have been before. You know, you're not duplicating it because you've got an original song with a melody and your own words and everything. But you're just trying to kind of do it as good as it once was in the past. And I think there's far too many kind of compromises that we set for ourselves most of the time in a recording studio or in any any kind of realms of art and uh, I think it's just kind of best to break the rules and get around them if I can, you know. Well, you must go If I use a reference point for like Streak on Amazara, it's like I want it to sound kind of more like British beat in a way, which I like, you know. That's that was kind of the way it ended up, you know, which is cool. And it was it was pretty much done like that. We would say like, let's do this, you know, let's 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 have a go at this this way. And usually it was like first or second take when we done it. It was great. It was like really really amazing to do. I think I think there was a couple of tries like Streak on Amazara. At first there was kind of we did an alternate version, you know, the first version was more of a kind of country laid back Hawaiian feel to it. It didn't, it didn't feel to me like it should sound like that, so straight away I was like, no, let's, let's make it sound like, a, like that kind of British thing more with this record. That's the way it kind of felt to me, so that's the way we went with it, with Nashville musicians. <laughs> mm -hmm. 